Todd from Sideshow FX once again, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to our new Cubase Pro Profiles for the Stream Deck Plus device. I'm going to give you the whole tour of everything that's involved in this pack. We're going to explore the mixer controls and how we can manipulate tracks, take a look at the quick controls section and how you can adjust the quick controls that come packed with the VSTs. I'll show you how you can control virtually any VST parameter with our coarse and fine dial controls on the new device. I'll show you how you can program your own VST controls. You can colorize your tracks at the touch of a button. You'll see how you can load a variety of VSTs automatically into an instrument track at the touch of a button. You can load pre-built effects or easily create your own. We can even manipulate MIDI notes with the dials and quickly access all of your VST presets. So there's a lot to get to, so let's get into it. So assuming that you've gone through the installation process and, uh, and uh, followed the directions in the PDF that was included in the pack, or perhaps you watched the video of the installation process, you'll need to go through those steps before you can uh, join in with the navigation here because you have to set things up. But once you're all set up and ready to go, let's start the tour. Now I'm gonna quickly jump into the VST utility here. Now, in order for a lot of this to work, you will need to launch the Cubase utility. And you probably saw this in their installation video, but it bears mentioning again that a lot of this is driven by the utility script that we have written that runs in the background. And you'll need to run that by pressing the Cubase utility. And you need to make sure the Cubase utility is loaded and running by opening up your taskbar tray and making sure that it's visible there. That way you know it's running. Okay, so we have, uh, as was mentioned in the installation, um, this is a pack that has 14 profiles that are all interconnected. And this is the main profile that you're looking at right here. And there's two pages on this profile, and you get to the pages on all the profiles just by swiping left or right on the dial strip here. So all the profiles in this pack link back to this main profile. So their back button, um, most of the profiles, their back button takes you to here. In a couple instances that we'll see a little later, uh, the back button uh, will take you to where you just were, and that's in the uh, VST utility profile, so we'll show you that. So let's start off uh, with the uh, command menu. So we click here, we go into the command menu profile, and this gives you, you know, a lot of your basic uh, um, file menu and edit menu functions in here. And as you can see on a Stream Deck software, it's indicating that there are six pages in this profile. We navigate through them by swiping to the left or right, and we have several key functions that you can uh, access here for, uh, for file and document management. Clicking the back button takes you back out to the main menu. The next profile that we can see next to it is the track mix strip. So clicking on this, this gives us some transport controls. So also gives us our first look at our dial commands. But let's fire up Cubase and let's see it in action. So of course your basic transport functions uh, are here and we can navigate our timeline of course. And the second page and uh, you know, this works on uh, the currently selected track. We only have track one track here. We can mute it, solo it, whatever you like. So let's go back to let's go back to the first page here. So I want to demonstrate uh, the dials uh, and how they interact uh, with Cubase. So of course the first dial is indicating that there's a zoom timeline. So as expected, you can zoom your timeline in and out with this one. The next dial over is a jog feature. We can jog our timeline back and forth. If we click on our selected track here in the mix console and use track pan, we can pan our selected track left and right. And with the selected track still selected, we can use this dial to adjust the fader. Now that isn't all that there is here, because Stream Deck has a feature called Dial Stacks, which allow you to stack up a number of different actions into one dial. And that's what we've done here. I'll, I'll quickly show you what it looks like in the Stream Deck software. If we go to the software here and we'll click on, uh, double click on the first dial here, you'll see that we actually have four different actions uh, that are available to us. Next one over, we have five different actions that are available. And I'll show you how we get to that. So on the device, you saw that on this first dial that there was four different actions. Well, by pressing the dial, 
that changes the action of the dial and it will also, and in some cases it can also change the action of the press on the dial strip. That's right, the uh, dial strip also acts same as these buttons do in that when you press it, it will invoke a particular command or action. So as you can see, we pressed uh, our first dial to get to the second command that's in this dial stack. And of course, as it says, it's zoom vertical. So if we select our track here and zoom vertical, we can vertically zoom our timeline. And if we press the button again, we can vertically zoom our selected track. Press it one more time and we have a zoom waveform. So we can increase and decrease the size of the waveform. It doesn't, it doesn't affect the, uh, the clip volume at all. It's just the, uh, just the view of the waveform itself. And of course, if we load this into our, our editor and with the editor selected, we can also zoom the waveform there. Pressing once more cycles back to the first function in this dial. Now the second one over, we showed you already that this is jog. Pushing in this gives us the nudge feature. So next one down, uh, we have navigate. Now if I select a track here, using the navigate dial, we can navigate to the different tracks. There's also a, a navigate up and down, and one more in the mix console you can select the different tracks. Now as you saw that the, uh, the track pan will work when our uh, a track is selected. We can pan here. Now by pressing on this, you see this is called uh, track pan course. Clicking on this turns us to track pan fine and this is obviously a finer movement of the panning function and as expected the fader is the same. Clicking it will take us to the fine control of track fader. Now we go in much smaller increments up and down. And these dials remain the same throughout the six pages of this profile. Now I'm going to land on here because I'm going to show you what this is. Now those of you familiar with our MIDI control packs, this will be familiar to you. These are track faders that, uh, of course, the one on the right is for our master, and it will adjust the master up and down. The, uh, the blue one is a selected track fader, and uh, it will adjust whichever track is currently selected. And the same thing with our panning here for the currently selected track. And, of course, our track navigation buttons. Now, uh, just a little note, if you find that this, uh, the reaction of uh, this fader is either too fast or too slow, this is e easily modifiable. I'll quickly show you how to do that. So jump over to your Stream Deck software and click on either at the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter. The, they both uh, are linked to each other. And if uh, we go down to the bottom here, you can see the fader speed. And we can change this fader speed to uh, whatever suits us best. And you want to click on the top one and change the, uh, the fader speed to be about the same. Otherwise, uh, it'll be radically different from one to the other when you press uh, to increase or decrease. Swiping over, now the fifth and sixth pages of, of this profile uh, is our quick controls. Now as indicated on the PDF, uh, these access uh, the quick controls that are available in Cubase 12. So if you have a particular um, a VST loaded that supplies quick controls, uh, into Cubase, these will control those, and I'll show you what we mean. So with Halion selected, we can uh, go over here to Quick Controls, and you can see that uh, there are some Quick Controls loaded. So by controlling these dials here, we have access to any one of the Quick Controls in this bank. And this is, of course, affecting the first four Quick Controls the second four is on the last page here, and we can control these as well. So if we open up the uh, VST itself, you can see that the quick controls for these dials have been assigned over here. That allows us to control these different parameters. And you can see, I can quickly swipe over and, and adjust these as needed. One more swipe, takes us back to the main page. Click to go back to main, 
And now we can step into the VST utility. You can see we've got quick control here. Now this is the same thing as you just saw in the track mix strip. First page, second page, uh, so the first four and the second four. And then the third page is a user assignable quick control. Now let's say that uh, I want to load up something different like uh, an Aturia um, VST. Let's say I want to assign these controls to the controls on the Stream Deck device. Well, what we need to do is we'll take our mouse, we're going to hover over the dial that we want to control, we're going to hold down control on our keyboard and press any one of these keys. So we'll press the C1 key. I'm holding control, and you'll hear a beep. So we're, what we're doing is we're call, it's called live key binding. So we can key bind on the fly. And I can go over the, the timber, hold control on the keyboard, press C2. Well, over time, hold control on the keyboard, press C3. Now, whenever I want to control either of these three controls, I hit on the C1 key. You see it automatically jumps to brightness. And I can adjust using our dials here. Now you can see we have four different styles of uh, control here. And they each do slightly different things. So the first dial and, and different VSTs work differently. And that's why there being there's four different offerings here. So with the first dial, this is a very basic uh, click and drag left or right. So if I just rotate this dial, you see it doesn't have an effect because this particular pot needs an up-down function, not a left-right. So I would go to the dial next to it, and this allows me to control that function. Now the dial next to that, the third dial, it does the same thing. It will rotate a value, but instead of moving the mouse and leaving it where it ends up, it will move the mouse and bounce it back to where it started. So if we move this value, you see the mouse stays where it is. And I move it back. So we have a lot more control in this VST with this dial. Now the fourth dial is, is an AI dial. And it is dedicated to Steinberg uh, VSTs only. So you'll find, I'm in an Arturia um, uh, VST right now, you'll find this dial will not affect that value. So let's close this down. I'll, I'll open up a Steinberg one. So if we open up Halion here and we mouse over any one of these parameters, let's mouse over frequency shaper and then we're going to move the AI, AI dial and it, it will move this dial for us. Now this fourth dial, the AI dial, it simulates the same functionality you find in the AI dial of the Steinberg CC121 or the knob controller, does this, it has the same sort of behavior. So we built it uh, and fashioned after uh, the Steinberg CC121. Now in addition to these, like we sh uh, saw earlier, there are dial stacks on here. So you can see that these are identified, the first two are identified as coarse. So by clicking, we can access a finer control and therefore this control will move in smaller increments. Pressing on the third dial, you can see will navigate us left and right versus up and down. And the fourth dial, our AI dial, can now do a fine control. All right, so that's your introduction to the quick controls. We can go back to our main and then back into VST utility. Okay, let's step into the insert effects profile. And you will have seen a quick demonstration of this in the installation video. What this allows us to do is program these keys for quick access to including effects into your channels. So a uh, quick navigation of the profile here. We have uh, four insert keys on this page. These are the four that you will find, and I'll just go backwards here, uh, in, into this page here that has all eight uh, on this page. So if you did the installation process with us, you will already have program these insert buttons to the channel settings. So let's open up channel settings. We can swing over to the first page here and just hit edit channel settings. Now, when we uh, hit insert one, we immediately are bounced to the insert one and we can then add an effect. 
And on the second page, we see our effects started here. We have um, on this page, eight of the more commonly used effects. At the press of a button, a compressor can be loaded right in. So we close uh, this window and go to insert two. And then we can add in an expander. And there's a second page of eight more of the more commonly used effects. And the next page here is blank. And what this is for is for you to add in your own effects that you find you commonly use. Now I'll quickly show you how to uh, customize this for your own use. And you can see in the software that the top left button is a template button ready for you to, to start working with. So let's double click this and you can see it's a multi-action uh, with three different actions here. So the last one is a system text. This is what we're interested in here. So we're going to highlight that and what we want to do is add in text. Now we want to add in the text of the effect exactly as it appears in our channel settings. So if I click the expansion, go to modulation and go to phaser, that is the exact way I need to type it. If it was FX modulator, that's the way you type it, etc. So we're going to type in phaser. And optionally, you can select it here as well, just to help you in your navigation. Once that's done, click multi-action to bounce back out. And then we want to give it the title here. So type phaser, and you can see it appears and you can find yourself uh, your own icon that is reflective of this, or you can just leave it as text. Now when we go to, uh, to Cubase, we have put up our channel settings. If you want, we can uh, go to insert three and then hit phaser. And there we go, we've got the phaser loaded. Very quick and easy to customize and modify this the way you need. All right. and. Our quick controls, once again, these do the same thing as we showed you earlier. And back to the main page. Okay, and now this is gonna take us back to our VST utility. Let's go into the VST plugins. Now this does the same sort of thing as, as the effects do, except these are pre-built out of the box. These will add an instrument track with these VSTs already preloaded. So let's say that uh, I wanna launch another analog lab it does that for us and it launches the software. So as you can see, it added Analog Lab 5 at the bottom of our stack. Now we have this page of plugins, a second page, and a final page of VSTs. Now you see we've got four empty slots here. Now this is designed for you to create your own shortcuts to VSTs that you have. Now the way we customize is we can take any one of these keys, we can copy it and paste it in any one of the empty slots, or you can overwrite any of the ones that maybe you don't have these. You can just overwrite those. We're gonna double click, you can see it's a multi-action. We're gonna go down to this system text here, and we're going to, we'll just delete that, that's just the title. We're gonna, uh, let's say we're gonna launch a retro log. And once again, you have to make sure it is exact same spelling in this text box as it appears in Cubase. So I'll just copy and paste that into the title just for organization. And we'll click to go out. We'll rename it as well. We're going to want to change the icon here because it's not Piano 5. It is Retrolog. So fortunately, in our pack, we've provided over 80 uh, icons for the most commonly used VSTs. So you should be able to find the one you the one you need in the pack. So let's open up our pack and we'll go into the icons. We'll go into VST, plugin, VST, and we have all of our icons are here. So we'll go down uh, to Retrolog and uh, we'll choose this one here and you just simply click and drag it onto the icon tray. Now we have uh, Retrolog loaded. Let's go into Cubase and let's click our Retrolog. And there you have it. It's loaded it up, created the track and opened up our VST. So once again, very quick and easy to customize how you like to work. Sliding again takes us through our quick controls. Bounce out back into VST utility. 
Now let's go to Keybind here because in the installation process, this is where we showed you how to keybind the add instrument and the add track buttons. So that's these two here. So in the installation process, we showed you how to keybind those. And this is where you, of course, created your insert keybinds. Now here's where we provide you with uh, 16 custom buttons for you to use for any parameter you choose in uh, any VST of your choice. So we have the first eight and the second eight here. You can assign these to any VST. So if we open up uh, Retrolog here and we hover over any one of the controls that we want. Let's say we'll hover over course tune. We're gonna hold control on our keyboard and press a key. That's been recorded. We'll now go over to fine tune, hold control, oscillator, hold control, three. Now, just as we're working, I can hit any of these keys and start adjusting our dial. Simple as that. And the beauty of this is, if I close this down, open up another VST and work with it and then come back to Retrolog, open it up, even move the window over here. It will remember my location and I'm still able to move the parameters that I programmed. So like I said, there are 16 of those keys that uh, are user findable and you can overwrite them at any time. You saw the first three that I programmed. If I wanted to change it to these three here, I can then hold control, press C1, hold control, press C2, etc. And now when I press C1, I bounce to the new location. Now also, what else you can do with these custom controls is we can, we can assign them to uh, track feeders. So let's just go over to the next page and we can hover over top of any one of our track faders, hold control, and hit any one of the keys. And we'll do a few, hold control, hold control. All right, and let's do the, the panning. So hold control, hold control, and hold control. So I've done those three tracks. So now whichever one I select, I can then adjust the dial and we can go to a finer function or a coarse function, whichever one you like. And then we can go to the panning. Panning of the second track. Go to the fader of the second track, etc. So you can set this up on the fly as you like when you work on a particular project. It takes you just a few seconds to program which tracks you want to control. Then you can use your Stream Deck device to control up to four tracks. Now let's go back out to the main page here. I'm going to show you something else that's handy. What I can do is I can select any uh, combinations of notes and if I hover over top of any one of the notes and use our function, we can move those selected MIDI notes back and forth and by raising them up and down, we can transpose them. So it's a bit of an added feature that we can uh, manipulate the MIDI notes with the dials in this way. Now one thing you, you may want to do is uh, if you want to save you, uh, your settings, this is where we do it here. You save your utility settings there and they, they will save and, and uh, they will be uh, stored into memory. Okay, back to VST. Now when we slide over, now the presets page here, uh, if we open up Analog Lab here, you can see I've got some user presets and we also have the developer preset navigation here. So the user preset, that works natively so we can just uh, scroll through uh, the different presets we've saved in this particular VST. The developer presets, these are hot, uh, hot key bindable 
keys. So what we can do is we can hover over our previous preset, hold control, and press the preset button. You hear the, uh, the beep. And then we can hover over the next preset, hold control on the keyboard, hit the preset key. Now when we press the keys, that will allow us to cycle through the different developer presets. And this will work in any VST. All right, and then we'll bounce back out to the main. Next one over is MIDI. This is a collection of MIDI uh, commands and controls, very similar to what we already have in our Cubase Pro Pack. Tools, all the tools are handy in one place. And you can, as always, and we encourage our users to do this, copy and paste these where you find that you need them. Transport, just as the name says, these are transport controls, allow us to control the timeline. Add track, same sort of thing, anything related to adding tracks. Now we can slip into Colorize. Let's uh, demonstrate this. We showed you a quick demonstration of it uh, in the installation process. But once again, let's swipe over. These are our colors that we've already pre-programmed. And with our track selected, hitting on any one of these will colorize our track. And we have a second page for the second eight of these colors. And we can swipe to the second page. Once again, the quick controls are there. And Grid Quantize will give us all of the quantization controls that we need in this profile. So the main DAO strip gives us some functionality for, uh, for transport controls, the basic play. And uh, back to the beginning, stop and uh, initiate record. Of course, pressing the dials brings us into the second, the second state in each of the dial stacks. These are, uh, these are familiar now to you, the zoom timeline, jog, track pan, and track record. And all of those you've seen. So that's it, that's your full tour of our Cubase Pro Profiles pack for the Stream Deck Plus device. Hopefully this gives you some insight into how you can use this in your workflow and, and we hope that it's gonna make your studio time a lot easier and your sessions a lot more successful. As always, thanks for watching, take care and we'll talk to you soon.